The title of tonight's message is, God's Spirit Will Not Always Strive with the Human Race. The opening scripture will be found in Genesis chapter 6, verse 3. And the Lord said, My spirit shall not always strive with man. Now, the definition of strive, to struggle, to contend. We live in the dispensation of the Holy Ghost. From the day of Pentecost unto this present day, the Holy Spirit is continually working and striving with people throughout the world. However, in the near future, he will cease to do so. At this point, the Holy Spirit is striving with sinners and backsliders everywhere, seeking to convict them of their sins and draw them to the saving power in the blood of Jesus at Calvary. The Holy Spirit is striving with many Christians also, trying to get each child of God to surrender as much of themselves to divinity as he can persuade them to do so, that he may baptize them to live inside of them. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 19 and 20 what? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which ye have of God, and ye are not your own? For ye are bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. Dwelling inside of a person is not the completion of the Holy Spirit's mission. The Holy Spirit's purpose is to make a person just like Jesus unto the glory of God. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 13. Till we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. This can only happen as a person daily yields to the Holy Spirit who abides within, emptied of self and made full of the Holy Spirit. It is the Holy Spirit that enables a person to do special works for God. It is the Holy Spirit that enables a person to fulfill a divine mission that is upon a person's life ordained by God. For instance, John the Baptist, the forerunner of Christ's first appearance on earth, was filled with the Holy Spirit from his mother's womb. And then there is Jesus. His earthly ministry did not start until he first received the Holy Spirit. Then the Holy Spirit immediately sent him into the wilderness where he fasted 40 days and nights. And upon returning, he came forth declaring, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. He was anointed to minister to humanity. Then, before Jesus ascended into heaven, he commanded his followers to receive the Holy Spirit before they started his church, to do no work but be baptized first in the Holy Spirit. And in this final hour, the Bride of Christ is the forerunner of Jesus' second appearance to earth. And every bridal company member must have the Holy Spirit dwelling within to finish the work of Jesus and prepare the way of his second appearance. Jesus says in John chapter 14, verse 12, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that believeth on me, the works that I do shall he do also. And greater works than these shall he do, because I go unto my Father. The greater works, meaning on a greater scale, are being accomplished. Because through technology today, the Bride of Christ is reaching more people on earth in one day than Jesus could possibly reach through his entire ministry. Acts chapter 2, verse 39. For the promise is unto you, and to your children, and to all that are afar off even as many as the Lord our God shall call. The promise of the Holy Spirit baptism is to all of God's children everywhere. And yet, 
With this being promised, made so clear in the Word of God, so many Christians have not obeyed God's Word in receiving this great promise of the baptism of the Holy Spirit. They have become saved and satisfied, and the Holy Spirit is now striving with them to go further and receive His baptism. Then there are other Christians who receive salvation, then continue on to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit, but then they too become satisfied. So the Holy Spirit must now strive with them to continue to go deeper in the Spirit, to become full of the Holy Spirit, so that He may have liberty to work in and through them at will at any time. Acts chapter 2, verse 4, And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. The takeover of the tongue is only the beginning of the Holy Spirit's work in an individual. It is the initial evidence. The goal of the Holy Spirit when He comes into a person's life is to take control of the whole person, to have the liberty and freedom to use that person, their hands, their feet, their ears, their eyes, every part of them. He wants to flow the anointing of God through you to those who are in need. Why? Because the Bible says it is the anointing that breaks the yoke. The Holy Spirit is a person. In John's Gospel, chapters 14 through 16, Jesus refers to the Holy Spirit with the personal pronoun, He. Jesus said, He will comfort you. He will teach you. He will guide you. He will show you things to come. The Holy Spirit, being a person, He laughs and He cries. He can be happy, angry, or sad. And He definitely speaks to people that He abides in, those who are yielded 100%. In fact, Jesus said, to seven churches in the book of Revelations between chapters 2 through 4. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith. The Holy Spirit living within must become reality. That is an absolute necessity. You must be sensitive to His will and His purpose for your life. The Holy Spirit moves within. He works on the inside, enabling you to get the work done on the outside. It's not enough to be baptized in the Holy Spirit. He needs your daily cooperation. He needs a yielded vessel to do His mighty works through. At this time, I want to take you to Romans chapter 8 to deal with you momentarily on the biggest obstruction the Holy Spirit has in dealing with people. Romans chapter 8, verses 5, 9, and 14. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the Spirit the things of the Spirit. But ye are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit, if so be that the Spirit of God dwell in you. Now, if any man have not the Spirit of Christ, he is none of his. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Sons and daughters of God are daily led by the Spirit. Are you led by the Spirit on a daily basis? Are you even conscious of the Spirit in your life on a daily basis. Consider yet another definition for the word strive. That is, to be in conflict, to compete. Many times the Holy Spirit is in conflict with the human spirit. Self and the Holy Spirit are at war continually. 
Galatians chapter 5, verse 17. For the flesh lusteth against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary one to the other, so that ye cannot do the things that ye would. Time and again, the human spirit stands up against God and his will for your life. And the Holy Spirit battles with the human spirit. With some people, the Holy Spirit is able to have his way only at certain times. Then it's self that takes the advantage in that person's life. But because the Holy Spirit has the advantage at certain times, a person in the flesh will justify themselves, be content in their relationship with the Holy Spirit, not even realizing all of the times that they're quenching him, quenching the Spirit, grieving the Holy Spirit. This should not be, for it is the responsibility of the Spirit-filled child of God to bring self and the human spirit under subjection at all times, to be diligent in keeping their human vessel full of the Holy Spirit, leaving no room for anything else. When a vessel is full of the Spirit, there's no room for self, there's no room for the devil, there's no room for people's opinions. You're full of the Spirit. Yes, these things will come to your vessel, but they cannot stay. You try to pour something into a vessel that's full, it just rolls out. It cannot stay. The Holy Spirit must have liberty to work for you and through you at any given time. And that can only happen, it can only be when you're full of the Holy Spirit. Galatians chapter 5, verse 25, If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. The discipline over self that gives the Holy Spirit this freedom and liberty in a person's life comes by prayer, fasting, living in the Word of God. Three steps, three complete steps. One is insufficient. Two is insufficient. In order for this plan of God to work, three steps must be taken. And then you are under subjection to the Spirit so that He can guide you and teach you and comfort you in your hour of need. When the Holy Spirit moves on you to spend time with the Lord and study His Word, do you obey or do you ignore his call and do as you please? When the Holy Spirit urges you to the prayer closet or to go on a Bible fast, whether short or long, do you listen or does his call fall on deaf ears? It's amazing how people will strive with God when they have a need. However, when all is well, many times people will not be so diligent in the ways of the Lord. Then the Holy Spirit within, being grieved, must strive once again with them, trying to get them to seek God, to maintain that close communion and relationship with the Lord. It can be easy for a person to allow this to happen. All is well in life, and they fall into the trap of complacency in their relationship with God. And the Holy Spirit then is left to strive with that person to bring them out of that lukewarm condition. Another mission of the Holy Spirit is to direct a person in soul winning. A person must have the Holy Spirit to be a real soul winner because nobody can find the Lord unless they're drawn by the Spirit. The Holy Spirit, he produces nine fruits inside of a person that he dwells in. All these fruits are listed in Galatians chapter 5. These fruits, such as love, joy, peace, gentleness, and goodness, these fruits can be shared with unsaved souls those that are around you, and many of these souls that you share this fruit with, they will be enticed. 
by this divine fruit. And this might be the means of them being led by the Spirit all the way to Calvary. Many have tried soul winning without the help of the Holy Spirit and committed a grave injustice to the kingdom of God. Don't think that because you're a child of God, you are obligated to preach and testify to people, forcing truth down their throats, so to speak. No, you just live the Jesus life before them. Share with them the abundance of the nine fruits that are to be produced in your life. Let the Holy Spirit flow the anointing of God through you. Then, if they have an interest and they want more, they will reach out to you. They will want to know what makes you so different from the world. Then the door will be instantly open for you to walk through. Jesus referred to the Holy Spirit as the Spirit of Truth. With him inside, he can use the Word of God to draw people to you. There is great power in God's Word. And if you allow the Holy Spirit to use the Word of God through you, it brings wonderful results. In this final hour, God will perform a mighty, miraculous work, and it will be done through the person of the Holy Ghost. The Holy Spirit is a necessity to our spiritual life, just as air is to our physical life. If our air was to be cut off, we would physically die. And without the Spirit of truth circulating within us, we would spiritually shrivel up and die. And this is why many churches are dead today. This is why they are not winning souls and working diligently, sacrificing to win the lost at any cost, to build the kingdom of our God. Truth and the spirit of truth are being compromised. Without the leadership of the Holy Spirit, all that's left for people, traditions, rituals, and a form of godliness. This is a Holy Spirit ministry, a spirit ministry of truth, Truth is upheld under the leadership and the power of the Holy Spirit, and then he confirms the truth with signs, wonders, miracles, and healings. It took the Holy Spirit to make the early church a powerful force in the book of Acts. Unfortunately, as time passed, the church failed because they rebelled against the leadership of the Holy Spirit. Today, the Holy Spirit is not an option. This baptism is a necessity to make the Bride of Christ a force once again. The Word of God declares that the latter reign of the Spirit will be greater than the early reign. And this is the pouring out time. So take down your umbrellas of doubt and unbelief to soak in this great spiritual reign, that it may do a mighty miraculous work in your life. The Holy Spirit will not have to strive with members of the bridal company. The bride of Christ is without spot, wrinkle, blemish, or any such thing in her spiritual garments. And the cry of her heart is found in Song of Solomon, chapter 1, verse 4. Draw me, and we will run after thee. Not casually follow, not walk, we will run. And running, you have to put forth a great effort. In the Bride of Christ, there is no hesitation or resistance against the Holy Spirit. It is total obedience to do the whole will of God. Now I take you back to the starting scripture found in Genesis chapter 6, verse 3. And the Lord said, My spirit shall not always strive with man. In the days of Noah, God looked down upon the earth and saw that the wickedness of that civilization was great, that every imagination of the thoughts of their hearts was evil continually. People had pushed God out of their hearts, their minds, and their lifestyle completely, choosing rather to be led of the flesh than be led of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit would strive 
many, many years upon that civilization. But finally, the time came, after so long, the Holy Spirit ceased to deal with them, and that civilization was instantly cut off. Then the hand of God's judgment took over. But thank God no one his family yielded to the Spirit of God and found grace in the eyes of God. And the Lord provided them a way of escape from that judgment. Now, Jesus warns in Luke chapter 17, verses 26 and 27, And as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it also be in the days of the Son of Man. They did eat, they drank, they married wives. They were given in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark and the flood came and destroyed them all. We live in the last days before God's judgment will fall. As in Noah's day, people once again are excluding God from their lives and their lifestyle. And it's becoming more and more difficult now for the Holy Spirit to reach into the hearts and minds of people throughout the earth. However, the bride of Christ, like Noah and his family, have found grace in the eyes of God. And once the last soul is saved and filled with the Holy Spirit, Jesus will come, and the Holy Spirit with the bride of Christ will take their flight out of this world, and then God's judgment will fall upon this world like it has never seen. Friend, listening to this message, if there's anything in your life unlike God, any sin, any disobedience, if you are saying or doing things that you know God would be displeased with, it is time to give your heart to the Lord. Feel the Holy Spirit striving with you right now to surrender your all to the Lord, to yield to the power that's in the divine blood of Jesus. For it is the Holy Spirit that's drawing you to Calvary. Feel that drawing. Feel and yield to his drawing. And let him draw you to the foot of the cross where the blood of Jesus will cleanse you. I want everyone here to say this prayer. And you listening to this message tonight, say this prayer with me. Say, O oh God, oh God, I confess all of my sin before you. Forgive me, Lord, and I will serve you the rest of my life. And I believe there is power in the blood of Jesus that washes away all of my sins. Say, come into my heart, Jesus. Come into my heart, Jesus. And amen. And if you meant that prayer, Jesus is yours. Now, are you in need of a miracle? Are you in need of a healing? Let the Holy Spirit Use the power that's in the divine blood, that same blood that he used to wash away your sins and give you eternal life in your soul. He will use that power on your body to heal you, to deliver you of all sickness, afflictions, pain, and diseases. And you who are watching tonight, if you're sick in body, Put your hand on the screen against mine. This is a form of laying on of hands. And you who are listening, put your hand on your listening device. Lord, in the name of Jesus, I bring the people before you now. God, you know the need in their life. You know their sickness and affliction, the pain that they're in. Lay a healing hand upon each one in the holy blood name of Jesus. Heal, heal, heal. Let that blood power flow to each person now. Deliver them, Lord. Set them free for your honor and glory. In the name of Jesus, I pray, and amen. Friend, watch every improvement. Give God the honor, the praise, and the glory. And let us know what God has done for you. We want to hear your testimony. You can send it to testimonies at ernestangely.org. And if you don't have the Holy Ghost, you must receive him. You'll never make rapture ground, friend, without the Holy Ghost leading you and guiding you every step of the way. Rapture ground is spiritual ground. And you must have him, the Holy Ghost, as your guide. Spiritual things are spiritually discerned. And it takes the person of the Holy Ghost to make it. But you must not only have him, you must yield to him on a daily basis or you'll lose your way.
You will lose your way and you'll never find that rapture ground where Jesus will meet the bride. Give yourself to the Holy Spirit. Surrender all to him. Receive him right now. Get off to yourself and start praising the Lord, and I will call this Holy Ghost anointing upon you. And as I do, friends, start praising him with glory. That word glory, praise him with your whole heart, and that power will fall upon you. And when it does, the Holy Ghost will come in, and then he will speak in another language, using your tongue, according to Acts chapter 2, verse 4. Lord, in the name of Jesus, I bring this people before you now. God, anoint them to receive the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus, receive ye the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus, receive ye the Holy Ghost. And friend, keep praising the Lord. Don't stop till the Holy Ghost comes in. And God bless you tonight.